Okay, students, this is episode two for the summer reading book, 10 Days That Unexpectedly Changed America, um, using actually a, a different laptop now, so um, that's why I have to use the headset, which I really don't like, uh, but it'll work. Second chapter is on uh, Shay's Rebellion. Let me give you a, a little overview, then I'll kind of march you through some of the highlights of the chapter as you prepare for your summer reading test. Uh, the second essay here raises an interesting question about cause and effect in history. A uh, fundamental question that uh, you should have noticed there is would the founding fathers uh, have adopted a constitution creating a strong central government the way they did if it weren't for Shays' Rebellion that took place in Massachusetts and other rebellions similar to that. This essay also highlights kind of a critical tension that we're going to see as we go through U.S. history of just the nature of democracy. How do you balance the demands and fears of democracy while preserving social order. Um, so in effect, Shays' Rebellion exposed the fragile, uh, the fragility and the fears of the democratic experiment. Um, James Madison viewed Shays' Rebellion as a warning, and like I pointed out, major result is that it led to the creation of a fairly strong central government under the Constitution because of fears of the mob, what one person referred to as mobocracy. Um, so that's uh, the basic overview. A little bit of details marching you through uh, chapter two. Um, the, the chapter begins just by giving a background of the event itself of Shay's Rebellion. Uh, the basic situation, uh, this is an event that took place in New England, particularly uh, in Massachusetts, and the setting is in the years following the American Revolution uh, when farmers uh, were broke. Uh, they had borrowed money uh, from uh, store owners, from merchants who then sold goods in England, etc. And I uh, won't go through all the steps there, but there was just an economic situation that was set up that after the American Revolution, farmers ended up in debt, had a quite difficult time paying off that debt, and merchants, bankers, the wealthier class began to require them to pay off that debt. Their farms, their homes, uh, foreclosures were starting on those, uh, and they responded by at first seeking legislative uh, help by getting uh, the legislatures, particularly in Massachusetts, to address their problems, to give them more time, to change the, stack, the tax structure, etc. The government did not respond uh, appropriately, and you have basically an armed uprising. Uh, and the key person there who led that was a revolutionary hero by the name of Daniel Shays that started a particular rebellion in Massachusetts. Um, they uh, So that's uh, the basic gist of it. Uh, that movement known as Shays' Rebellion uh, ended up being repressed. Uh, the Massachusetts legislature or government called up an army of 9,000. And it's interesting to note as you kind of see tension here between the wealthier classes and the poorer classes that yes, it's the legislature calling up this army that puts down Shays' Rebellion, but that army is paid for by bankers, by the the wealthy class. Uh, the book points out, I think, uh, quite nicely that Shays' Rebellion highlighted uh, a two different views of the American Revolution, uh, the nature of our union, the nature of democracy uh, that flowed out of the American Revolution. Those who would have been involved in Shays' Rebellion viewed the American Revolution as a triumph of liberty. They would have championed democracy. Citizens had banded together during the American Revolution uh, to depose an oppressive and unresponsive British government. Uh, now then, those who opposed, interestingly enough, Shays' Rebellion uh, maybe kind of changes 
what we might think. They actually feared democracy. Those who opposed Shea's rebellion did that. They viewed the revolution, the American Revolution, as not uh, creating a system for democracy, but replacing the British aristocracy, the crown and the lords, uh, that type of system of government, replacing it with what is best described as meritocracy. Uh, merit. Those who should rule should be the best men, perhaps the wealthiest or the smartest, but everyone, no. There's a fear of democracy uh, that comes out of that. So an interesting tension that develops there. Like I mentioned, the rebellion was put down uh, by the Massachusetts militia, but then the chapter continues and develops a couple more ideas, even though the Shayites lost the rebellion, they won the peace. And what that means is that the legislature of Massachusetts and throughout England began to pass laws uh, that gave those who were in debt more time to pay the debt off, passed some changes that ended some of these foreclosures. So the rebellion's put down, but concessions are made to those uh, to the to the poor people, to the poor farmers, uh, particularly of Massachusetts. Uh, the major result, and I've already mentioned that it leads, Shays Rebellion leads to a strong government under the Constitution, uh, but the steps to that, one of the main results is that it pointed out the weaknesses of the original government or the original Constitution car called the Articles of Confederation. So Shays Rebellion takes place in a push to discard the Articles, which were very weak, uh, the government couldn't tax the people, didn't have a militia, no single executive, couldn't regulate trade. A whole lot of weaknesses of the Articles, but people were willing to live with it until Shays' Rebellion. James Madison, uh, the book mentions as being the key who develops the plan that will be discussed at the Constitutional Convention in Philadelphia that called for a strong central government. It mentions quite rightly that George Washington was a key that if he wouldn't have showed up at the Constitutional Convention, that Constitution may not have had the clout without him to get approved. And what motivated Washington to show up? Well, it was Shays' Rebellion. That scared him and others uh, to death. So as the book said, it was almost as if Shays' specter, that his ghost was present at the Constitutional Convention as they argued for a very strong central government to ensure domestic tranquility, peace so that these types of riots wouldn't take place. At the convention, you had Federalist versus Anti-Federalist. Federalists were calling for a strong central government. They won the day. Anti-Federalists, more in favor of local control and democracy, had a hard time arguing for their position of a weaker central government because of the fear of Shays' rebellion. So they're ultimately going to lose. The Federalists will win out, and it's going to be a strong constitution uh, that is developed there. Uh, the chapter begins uh, to wrap up as it talks about the ratification of the constitution and just mentions, because of this tension, these two views of democracy, two views of government, strong government versus weak government, uh, that the passing of the Constitution was not a slam dunk, that there were quite a number of Federalists who opposed it. Uh, and what happened is enough support was garnered to get it approved in the states by promising two things. One was a Bill of Rights. And the other thing that garnered uh, support of the Constitution was the writing of a series of documents called the Federalist Papers, which argued point by point uh, all the benefits of this Constitution that had been formulated. Those two things led to the Constitution being passed. So in conclusion on this chapter on Shays Rebellion, what does it point out? It points out that the gap between American ideals of democracy and the realities of power emerged as tension, uh, which we can still see today. Yes, we believe in freedom of people, democracy, but yet it has to be limited. And when the Constitution was written as a result of Shays' Rebellion, created a very strong central government. Hope this helps.